Welcome to Props and Parlays. Today we're going to talk about UFC Fight Night. We're going to go over some props with that, and we're going to do a little deep dive on an NFL season future. It is Dalton Kincaid, whether we like the over or under on his receiving yards. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm Andy from wagertalk.com. Let's jump into UFC. Let's go over some props as these guys have uh, just started putting out some of the totals here. So we'll go through each fight. Um, while you're watching, if you guys just could hit the like button, really, really appreciate it. And then um, go ahead and leave a comment. Tell us what you like about these UFC plays or tell us what you like about the NFL future. C keyword is water. If you if you can't come up with a great comment, no worries. Just type in the word water or see if you can work the word water into a gambling related comment. I love those. All right. Let's take a look at some of these props. Uh, Danny Barlow versus Nikolai Baratenikov. I think Barlow wins this, and honestly, I, I think he wins by knockout. I really wouldn't mess with this. Minus 355, you're going to get a better price on him to win by knockout. I like that they did the over one and a half because I would take the under two and a half. I think Barlow's, I think Barlow's power is going to be too much. Uh, Nikolai has never faced anybody who hits as hard as Barlow. Danny Barlow is one of the hardest, hardest punchers in all of UFC. There are some stories about how hard he hits, and we've seen it on display. He has got some insane power, and uh, I think he gets to the chin of uh, Veritenikov. So uh, I wouldn't mess with the over-under, but I would wait for Barlow maybe to win by knockout. Uh, Carol Rosa and Panny Kianzad, I would be a little worried about this over. I know everyone's going to say, oh, Rosa, Carl Rosa and Kianzad. Kianzad got submitted in her last fight in the first round and looked really bad doing it. Um Rosa's not that kind of fighter. I just, Panny Kianzad getting submitted or knocked out or giving up or something does worry me. I don't think Rosa's got that power, but I'm certainly not willing to lay minus 445. I think there are other better spots um, on the card here. Uh, Yusuf Zalal and Jarno Aarons, the over minus two and a half at minus 230, I think it's a good parlay piece. My guess is Zalal's going to work some takedowns. That is Aaron's big weakness. Um, he just doesn't have a whole lot of takedown defense, doesn't have a good get-up game. Um, and Aaron's, we saw striking, much improved, uh, as we predicted. We predicted Aaron's to pull the upset uh, in his last fight against Stephen Wynn, and his his striking looked a lot better. I don't think Zalal's going to want to mess around uh, too much with that. So fight to go the distance or over two and a half goes pretty good. This line on Zalal's insane. Minus 395 on Zalal, no way. Uh, Santos and Chandler. Santos just came out with a post where she's talked about how this is her, like one of the camps that she finally hasn't been breastfeeding. So she feels healthier. Um, I will leave it up to you guys to decide if uh, she is on the special vitamins uh, based on some of the pictures that we've seen and based on what she looked like a few years ago. I'll let you decide that. However, um, I think she's going to have a real advantage against Chelsea Chandler on the outside. And this minus 142 is pretty good, but man, maybe Santos by decision, pretty close to even money, maybe even plus money. Um, Chandler's just kind of sloppy. She fights like a bull in a China shop, not real polished. I think Santos is going to edge her out um, on the feet. Chandler is going to want to clinch. So I think you could see some dead time um, just up against the fence. Santos will do that too, but Santos by decision could be pretty good. Uh, Jonathan Denise and Carl Williams. If you if you think Carl Williams is going to win, you're going to take this over one and a half. If you think Denise is going to win, you're going to like the under one and a half. This is a classic wrestler versus a striker. Denise has got big time power. Carl Williams is a nonstop wrestler. I I think I mean it really is is Denise going to knock him out or is Carl Williams going to wrestle him to death? Um, what I like about Carl Williams is he doesn't deviate from his game plan. He starts wrestling the second the fight starts and he doesn't stop. If you get up on him, he just takes you right back down. Um, in his last fight, he had enough cardio to where he was taking Taffa down late in the third. So I don't worry about him gassing out. I'm of the opinion that Carl Williams wrestling is going to be too much for Denise. But if you're like, Denise's power is going to be too much, he's going to catch Carl Williams. I totally get it. So this really is dependent on what you think of uh, each fight. Kazama and Gregorio, you're just taking the fight not to go the distance. It's a Kazama fight. This plus 110 at under one and a half really has me intrigued because Kazama has no chin, no striking defense. He's gotten scorched in his uh, last two fights in the first round. Now, Gregorio has a terrible cardio, but he's got power to get Kazama out of there in the first. Um, 
I like this plus one ten kind of at the under one and a half, but just because it's a Kazama fight. If you if you just went in parlay piece, just take this fight not to go the distance. I seem I, I don't see how this fight goes the distance uh, with the way both of these two fights. So if you're looking for a good parlay piece, just wait till fight not to go the distance comes out. Luciano and Alan Carr. I, I know I'm supposed to talk about props. I kind of like Alan Carr uh, at plus 154 to, to win it. But for props, I think you're looking at overs on this one. Alan Carr, she's she's small, but she's strong. She takes she takes her opponents down, does a good job with them on top, but she can't submit. She doesn't really have good ground and pound. She doesn't have very good striking defense so far. I will say on Contender Series, her cardio was awful. And um, in her first UFC fight, it got much better. So Luciano, this is a rematch from Contender Series, by the way. These two fought to a draw on Contender Series. Luciano is much more of a striker. In the first fight, Alan Carr took her down a lot, held her down on the ground, leaned to the over. Um, but this plus 154 is kind of good. Nascimento and uh, Filo, I like the over in this one. These are two guys with really, really good BJJ. And sometimes we just see that cancel each other out. I'm not sure... I don't think Filo's going to be able to get Nasimeno out of there. And I'm not sure Nasimeno's going to get Filo out of there. If they do, these guys aren't these guys aren't big strikers. Um and whenever they fight anybody else, they always have the BJJ like uh advantage. But we saw Filo go over this against uh Mikhaev. In fact, Filo almost beat Mikhaev and that was in his debut. Nasimeno is just a BJJ master. I think these two kind of don't I don't think you're going to be able to exploit any weaknesses, or at least these guys are on each other. So I lay, I lean the over at plus money on that one. Damon Jackson and Jose Mariscal like the over on this one. Mariscal just went to the distance against Morgan Cherrier, uh, where Mariscal started to wrestle more, tried takedowns. Uh, Damon Jackson, he's not knocking people out these days. He's kind of grinding out decision wins. So you're not, you're probably not not. Damon Jackson is not knocking out Mariscal. Tell you that uh, Mariscal is too tough. So I lean to the over on that one. Gutierrez and Bashrod is off, and then to burn Spivak under three and a half. Spivak we saw against Cyril Gone had no cardio after the first round. I mean zero. He couldn't get any takedowns on Gone, and he was just done, done. Uh, Tabura, I see Spivak's going to be a little bit bigger. I think these two may cancel each other out in the first round, and if they do, Spivak, if Spivak gasses again, Tabura is going to knock him out, uh, just like. Cyril Gunn did. So I actually like the under uh, at minus 130, three and a half. I was pretty surprised. See, this being said, if Spivak gets Tabura on the ground in the first round, Spivak could absolutely wrap, wrap up an arm triangle, um, some kind of submission. Um, but either way, I th I don't think this makes it to the rounds four or five. So I do like that one. So, all right, guys, that is your UFC. Let's uh, take a look here real quick at our, uh, well, actually, first off, guys, if you haven't hit the like button, do that. If you haven't left a comment, go ahead and do that. And I do have to tell everyone what we have up at wagertalk.com. Um, we are just on fire here, guys. We just crossed 100 units for 2024, plus 100.8. So I'm not going to celebrate it because if I if we lose like one unit this week, now we're down below 100 units and we're not going to celebrate every time we're going over and under 100 units. But it's been a spectacular run, six straight weeks of winning bets. So if you've been with us uh, for any length of time, your bankroll is very, very happy. So what do we have up? 5% UFC play. We just went over some props. Um, we are 5-0 and in our last five UFC plays. Uh, number one, the last seven days. So if you're looking for just one play for this weekend, you can grab that. We do have our NFL futures and week one pack. 41 and 16 in futures the last 365 days. Could not be more proud of uh, of that one. So, um, uh, and yeah, we were plus 16 units last September. Um, we last year we started off the NFL season great, and then we just cratered in the middle, and then we had a great end of the season in playoffs. So, we're um, we're looking to to start off strong once again. But this pack is a no brainer. Uh, you get all of our futures. We're number one last 365 days in futures. And along with the futures, you're going to get all of our week one plays. So I would lock that in ASAP. By far the best deal is a special that they have going on right now, which is buy two months and you get August free. So what the deal is, is you just get uh, September and October and you're going to get the rest of August. And we've shown that low volume over the summer works great. 
We brought in 14 units of profit last week on 11 plays. We only had 11 plays in the entire week. and We brought in 14 units of profit. So um, once we start ramping up here, uh, when September and October rolls around, and once we start getting NBA and NHL trickling in, um, along with college football and along with NFL, this is a great deal. So and don't waste any time to get it. Like the sooner you get it, the the sooner you start getting all of the August plays. And that includes that 5% play that we have up. So this is what I've been uh, telling everyone to get. If you're looking at looking to invest for a few months, this is a no brainer. Buy two months, get August free. I mean, it's 33% discount. So go ahead and grab that. All of that is at Andy Lang's profile page at wagertalk.com. Okay, let's take a look. Let's talk about Dalton Kincaid. And what we're talking about is Dalton Kincaid. Um, is he going to go over or under 750 yards receiving? So we look at 2023, played 16 games, he had 73 receptions on 91 targets for 673 yards, only two touchdowns. That drove fantasy football managers absolutely bonkers. Uh, I have no doubt. So, what do we do with this 750 yards receiving? Well, if you guys know me, you know that I love playing unders. I'm holding four MLB futures, and they're all unders. I'm going to go the opposite direction, and I'm going to take the over on Dalton Kincaid 750 yards. Um, we got a few things that are going on here. And the biggest one, the glaring one, is Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis not being there. Um, I've got the numbers here. So... They combined for 1,929 yards, 241 targets, and 152 catches last year. So that production has got to go somewhere. I imagine James Cook is going to be an even bigger part of the offense. We saw him emerge as a legit number one running back, so I'm sure he's going to get more work. But look who was third in yards. It was Dalton Kincaid at six <laughs> at 673. Dalton Kincaid had more catches. Uh, than Gabe Davis. So um, Dalton Kincaid was a big part of their offense as a rookie. And that's the other thing. He was a rookie. So now he gets a full year, another full training camp to get on the same page. And when we look at Dalton Kincaid um, at his game log, you know, I liked it in the playoffs. They weren't scared to, to, uh, to target him. He had 11 targets, eight catches, 104 yards and a touchdown. And as a rookie tight end in the playoffs. So, um, I think it's pretty good. He finished the year strong, but he didn't have one game over 90 yards receiving. I think that changes a hundred percent. He's, he's going to have a hundred yard game um, this year. Uh, that's, I don't even think that's a bold prediction, but I, I would not be surprised if he had multiple hundred yard games. So um, we saw a couple real clunker games out of him. This O oh, no receptions on two targets for no yards. I doubt we're going to see that again. And then um, they did have the big ass kicking against Washington where they didn't have to throw it all and um, get two catches for, <laughs> for three, for three yards. So I think you see him a lot more consistent. Um, and I like that he played 16 games uh, last year. If he plays 16 games again, and that's always the worry with taking over on the futures. If he pulls a hamstring and misses six weeks, you know, you're kind of screwed. Um, but I think if he plays 16 games, I think he flies over this total, to be honest. Um, I also want to take a look just quick, quick here at Dawson Knox, other tight end there. You know, Dawson Knox had a big, big, which uh, his numbers just plummeted last year. You know, he goes from 587 and 517 in 2021 and 22. He only has 186 yards receiving. So I don't think there's a lot of competition for Dalton Kincaid as far as tight ends go on the bills. So I think he's going to be, have a real resurgence. And if you're in fantasy football, you probably have heard all the podcasts and uh, all the rankings about what to do with Dalton Kincaid. You got to believe his touchdowns go up, but for the purposes of this future, I believe that Dalton Kincaid is going to go over 750 uh, yards receiving. If he plays at 16, 17 games, I would not be surprised if he um, creeps up on that thousand yards. I, I really have high, high hopes for Dalton Kincaid. So, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Remember code word is water in the comment section. Thanks everyone for joining us on props and parlays today. We'll see everyone later.